Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to thepixelab.net. This is Jordan Condell. Today I want to talk to you about optical flares and integrating it with Cinema 4D. So on a recent project I had to make sort of a light bank, sort of similar to the one that Andrew Kramer showed how he made it in After Effects, similar to this picture. And uh, I spent a little bit of time setting up my lights in After Effects and I said, this is ridiculous, I hate this, and uh, it's taking way too long. So I jumped over into Cinema 4D and did everything in Cinema 4D to prep the scene, which ended up saving me a ton of time, thanks to some pretty sweet tools like the cloner object. So I'm just going to walk you through that really quick today. So let's go ahead and make a light first. And let's go ahead and throw that light into a MoGraph cloner. And uh, on the cloner, let's go ahead and change this to an object mode, which means that we can specify an object to clone this light onto. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, shut this off for right now, and let's make a plane object. Let's rotate it uh, 90 degrees, and let's go ahead and kind of zoom in on it here. Maybe stretch it out a bit. So these edge points in here are going to be where it clones all these lights onto. So let's go ahead and turn that cloner back on. And uh, in the object mode, let's go ahead and drop our plane in there. So now you can see that we have tons and tons of lights in here, way too many. So we got to go to our plane, and uh, let's actually turn the plane off. And let's go ahead and change these width segments to maybe 10 by 10. And now you can see we're starting to get that light bank effect, right? And uh, this is looking pretty good. So one thing that I wanted to integrate was sort of a wrapping effect so that these lights are kind of wrapping around. And this is very flat right now. So let's go ahead and uh, turn that cloner off and go back to that plane. And before we kind of lose our position, let's make a camera. And let's make sure that we're off of the camera before we pull out. All right, so we got our scene set up. Now we want this plane to bend. So let's go ahead and go to our deformers and let's use a wrap. And we're going to take the wrap and put it inside that plane. Now we're getting that kind of bending effect. So now let's go back to our camera and let's turn that plane off and turn the cloner back on. Now you can see that we're getting that sort of warping effect, right? And we can play with the radius of it and all that kind of business. So let's just kind of set up our lights exactly how we want them to come into uh, After Effects. And there we go. That looks pretty good. So now we've got our light bank, which would have taken quite a while to make in After Effects. So one last thing we want to do is make sure that we have a lot of flexibility when using optical flare. So we're going to take this light and we're going to rename it A. And we're going to duplicate this one and put it in that same cloner. Now the cool thing about the cloner is that you would think if you duplicate it, it would make twice as many clones or it would uh, kind of mess with the position of them, but it doesn't. It just sorts between A and B. It uh, keeps the same amount of clones and keeps them in the same place, which is really, really nice. So we're going to change that one to B. And the last thing we need to do is right click, go to Cinema 4D Tags and add a external compositing tag so that we'll bring these lights into After Effects. And the cool thing about this setup is we don't actually have to save out an RGBA image or do any of that. All we need is the compositing project file, which is uh, very, very uh, quick to render. So we're just going to call that test and save it. And that's it. We're done. Now we can jump over into After Effects and start the fun product. So let's go ahead and import a file here and we'll go to our desktop, test, and bring in our AEC file. So let's open up our AEC file and you're going to notice that we have all of our lights set up here and our camera. So we can actually orbit around here. Everything is already set up perfectly in 3D space, which is really cool. And all of our lights are A, B, A, B. All the way down, we have uh, 134 lights. In our RGBA image, we can just delete that since we don't need it. All right, so let's get to the fun part. Let's go ahead and add a layer new solid. And on that solid, we're going to go ahead and apply Effect Video Copilot Optical Flares. So here is the default optical flares. I actually have the Pro presets, which gives you an extra, I think there's like 50 extra ones. And the Pro presets are some pretty crazy wild flares, uh, which are really, really nice. All right, but for this one, we're not going to be using any of the presets. Uh, we're going to actually go ahead and go to Edit, uh, Clear All. Yeah, we'll clear everything. And let's just go ahead and put a simple glow in there. And we'll hit OK. So now we have our glow, and we want this to be spread out among all the different lights, right? So let's go ahead and change our source type from 2D to track lights. And it's going to put that uh, optical flare on every single light. And obviously, we're going to be way too bright here. So let's go ahead and bring the scale down a little bit, and let's bring the brightness way down. 
So we're almost at the effect that we want, but we can't really see what's going on. So a great shortcut to know is Command Shift H. So hit Command Shift H, and then you'll be able to uh, to see what's going on better. So one thing that I really don't like is uh, the fact that they're pretty milky, right? There's a lot of sort of milky haziness going on. And there's a really quick way to be able to fix that, but you need to know exactly where it is. And that is in your glow, there is an option called gamma. And you're going to want to turn that gamma way down, and that's going to kind of decrease that halo of glow from around there, and it'll make your, your comp a little bit less milky, right? So there you go, now we're getting somewhere. And then we can go ahead and you know play with our brightness, and that's gonna kind of change the way that they look, right? All right, so one cool thing about optical flares is this flicker tab, which a lot of people kind of ignore. Some people kind of go in and do expressions for opacity and wiggle and all that kind of stuff, uh, which I have done in the past without even thinking about the flicker tab, but this is basically a wiggle uh, expression on these lights. So if we change the speed to say five and the amount to uh, you know 75, now it's going to kind of wiggle through these. Now one thing you're going to notice is if you don't render out a full image, but you just render out that frame, we're only going to have one frame. So we're going to have to go to our camera and our lights and just drag those out. All right, and now if we do a RAM preview, you can see that we're getting that really, really nice flickering look. So let's say that we want to go ahead and add some color to this, uh, but we want more flexibility. We don't want just one color, we want multiple colors. Well, that's the reason that we did that A and B and uh, two different lights and naming them. Because what we can do under the, uh, the lights option is we have name starts with anything, and we also have uh, these other options. So if we go to A, you'll notice that we are only selecting half of them, the ones that, are, that start with A. So that's a really great way to have more flexibility because now what we can do is just du duplicate this solid and then on the other optical flares we can change that to B. Now you're not going to be able to see both of them because by default they are both on a solid, uh, kind of on black. So what you can do is change the render mode to on transparent for both of these and then you'll be able to see both of them. Oops, change that to on transparent. And then on the top one we can change that to a different color and now you can see we're able to get two different colors kind of mixed into there. And you can do as many colors as you want. You can render out your lights as A, B, C, D and have tons and tons of flexibility. And then if you add your, your flicker to these, you're going to get a really nice kind of pulsing light look, uh, which you can use for a lot of different effects and backgrounds. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of a way that you can integrate Cinema 4D with optical flares, a really, really fast way to set up uh, and kind of position your cloned lights so that they're in 3D space and uh, you don't kind of have to sit here and uh, position each of them manually in After Effects which is a pain in the butt because they don't really have a good kind of cloner feature. So that is a fantastic way to save a little bit of time and also the nice thing about the cloner is if you just put an A light and a B light it's going to kind of automatically rename all the clones A and B, A and B uh, which you can't do in After Effects. So I definitely encourage you to add some lights in Cinema 4D and bring them over uh, with an external compositing tag. It'll save you tons of time and uh, it's a lot of fun. Thanks for checking out the pixellab.net everybody. I really appreciate you uh, supporting the site and we'll talk again next time. Bye everybody!